Hey guys, today we're gonna to show you how to do at home basic maintenance on your Can-Am Maverick Trail or your Can-Am Maverick Sport. It's gonna be the same process for the 800s and the 1000s. And with this, you're gonna be able to save some money and time from having to go to the dealership. And you know, this stuff is what we call mile marker maintenance. You're gonna to wanna to check your owner's manual. There's a maintenance schedule in there and it'll list a mileage and then have checks underneath it that you need to go through. We're gonna be covering most of those checks today. And when you're going through the process, you also wanna just be observant, check for any leaks or anything that you see is wrong. Make sure you get that fixed at the same time. But with all that being said, let's get started. To get this done, you're gonna need some maintenance items. Now, the stuff you need will depend on the mileage of your machine. We're gonna start out with this Tusk four stroke oil change kit. This comes with the 040 oil, the oil filter, crush washer and funnel. We're also gonna be changing out the gear case oil as well as the front diff. And for that, we've got the Tusk drivetrain oil change kit. Other than that, we're doing an air filter. We're gonna be looking over other items as well. So as you go through the process, if you notice you have a torn CV boot or worn out ball joints, you can find all of this stuff on our website. Just click the link in the description below. To change the oil, I'm gonna start out by loosening up the dipstick by the right rear wheel well. Then I'm gonna place the drain pan underneath the crankcase. I'm gonna use a 17 millimeter socket to remove the drain plug. Now I'm gonna clean off the drain plug and install a new crush washer. I've got that sealing surface clean as well. So I'm gonna install the drain plug and torque it to 22 foot pounds. Inside the cab, I'm gonna remove both seats as well as the access panel. And that's just held in with some plastic rivets. Now I can use my eight millimeter socket to remove the three bolts holding the oil filter cover on. So I'm gonna remove that and the old filter. Next, you wanna clean the sealing surfaces and inspect or replace that O-ring. Install the new oil filter and install the cover and torque the bolts to 89 inch pounds. Now I'm gonna measure out 2.1 quarts of oil, pour that in using our funnel. Now I'm gonna reinstall the dipstick, run the machine for a minute, and then after shutting it off, you wanna verify the oil level on the dipstick. It should be between the minimum and maximum marks. To replace your air filter, we're going to the right side of the machine. We've got this outer cover that we're gonna remove by releasing the two tabs. Next, we have three clips for the air box cover. After that, you can pull the air filter out. If the filter is packed with dirt, torn or damaged, you're gonna to wanna to get that replaced. And you can see we're upgrading to a foam filter so we can clean this out and re-oil it in the future. You're gonna to wanna to wipe the air box down with a rag, get all of that dust out of there. Once it's clean, you can install your new filter. Just press it in all the way. After that, I'm gonna reinstall the air box cover and make sure the three latches are clipped down all the way. And last, we can install that outer cover with the two tabs. Moving on to the gearbox oil, I'm gonna place my drain pan underneath the drain plug. That's gonna be located near the rear axles. I'm gonna remove that drain plug with my 17 millimeter socket. While everything's draining out, I'm gonna clean up the drain plug and install a new crush washer on it. After that, I'm gonna clean the sealing surface and then reinstall the drain plug and torque it to 22 foot pounds. At this point, we can remove the dipstick and fill it with 1.5 liters of 75140 oil. And after that, we're gonna double check the level on the dipstick and make sure it's between the minimum and maximum marks. Now moving to the front of the machine, we're gonna change out that differential oil. So I'm gonna place a drain pan in between the front axles. And if you go straight up from there, you're gonna find the drain plug we're gonna use a five millimeter Allen socket to remove it. After that, we're gonna clean off the drain plug, inspect that O-ring, make sure it's good. Then we can install it and torque it to 24 inch pounds. Now on the right side of the differential, we're gonna remove the fill plug using our eight millimeter Allen. Then we can use a flex funnel and fill it with 400 milliliters of 7590 oil. Then we can install the fill plug and torque it to 12 foot pounds. Moving on, we need to check our battery. This is a cause of a lot of different problems. You can have loose connections, corrosion, or the battery might just be at a low state of charge. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the seat cushion. So what we're looking for is any corrosion around the terminals. You also wanna make sure that the battery terminals are tight. If they aren't, you wanna make sure you tighten them down. 
If you see any corrosion, you can use some baking soda and water along with a wire brush to clean that off. The last thing you want to do is check the voltage. You should have 12.8, 12.9 volts, and then if you turn your key on and have the lights on, you should only drop about a volt in about a 10 second period. So, I mean, this thing has dropped two volts in less than 10 seconds. With that said, we know we need to at least try to recharge this battery, but we've already checked this one. We know it's bad and we're just gonna get a new one installed. So to swap this out, I'm just taking the negative terminal off first. Then we've got the positive and we've got a 10 millimeter socket for the retaining bracket. I'm gonna set my battery back in. Assembly is reverse of removal. To inspect your belt, you're gonna start by removing the bolts around the perimeter of the cover. We're using a Tusk flex drive tool. With the cover off, we're gonna thread the removal tool in and then tighten down the bolt to spread the sheaves. You'll find this in your machine's toolkit, but if you can't find it, we have replacements available on our website. We're also using a washer to prevent our clutch from getting marred up. So after you've done that, you should have enough slack in the belt to walk it off the drive clutch and you wanna pay attention to the orientation of the belt. To inspect the belt, I've got a new one here for comparison, but the main things you're looking for are any cracks or missing cogs, frayed cords coming off, glazing, or uneven wear on the belt. You can also check the width of the belt and compare it to the spec in your manual. You just wanna measure from cord to cord. Next, I'm gonna clean things up with a little bit of compressed air and a rag. You also wanna inspect the sheaves for grooves or any visible damage. If they look good, you can go ahead and reinstall your new belt. When you do that, you wanna make sure you can read it from the top or verify that you have the arrows facing the front of the machine. With that in place, we're gonna remove the spreading tool and rotate the driven clutch six to seven times until the belt is sitting at the top. Check the sealing gasket and make sure it's not torn and then reinstall your cover. At this point, we need to make some inspections down by each of the wheels. So we're gonna be checking things like bearings, CV boots, bushings, and even some U-joints. So the first thing I'm gonna do is check bearings and bushings. So what you wanna do is grab onto the wheel. We're gonna rock it side to side and up and down. And we're gonna be checking for any play. And this is all about prevention. We don't want anything to break while we're out on the trail. While I'm rocking the tire up and down, I'm also taking a look at these ball joints and making sure there's no play in those. So I don't feel any up and down play, nothing in the bearings. So I'm going side to side. I do feel a little bit, but I can see it's just the rack and pinion. It's just moving a little bit. You wanna look around, make sure the tie rod end is not worn out. If you've got any play in there, you do wanna replace it. And you know, again, you wanna check these bushings in the A-arms. If there's any play in there, make sure you get them replaced. Last, while I'm looking here, I wanna rotate this over. I've got the machine in neutral. That way we can rotate the wheels. You know, and you are gonna feel some resistance, but you just wanna make sure that the wheels rotate freely and smooth. If you hear any weird sounds or if it really binds up and doesn't feel right, then you know something is wrong and needs to be repaired. So all that stuff is looking good. Next, we're gonna move on to the CV boots. So we just wanna make sure we're looking at the rubber and I'm just gonna rotate this, make sure there's no tears or cracks in the rubber on either boot. You also wanna check this boot for the rack and pinion, make sure it's not torn. I also wanna check the universal joint for the prop shaft coming up. So it's kind of hard to see, but if you look right behind your front gear case, you're gonna see that universal joint. We're gonna try to rock it back and forth and make sure there's no plate in the joint itself. You might feel a little backlash in the gear case. That's normal. Again, just make sure there is no play in that U-joint. While you're looking around, make sure you check the shock seal. If you have some dirt and oil grime build up right here, then you know it's leaking and needs to be replaced. Then we can inspect the remaining chassis parts on the front and rear of the machine in the same way. So with all that looking good, we're gonna go ahead and grease our A-arms. We've got a grease zerk on each of the pivots. 
We're just gonna put a couple pumps in there. And on the back, it's a similar thing, but you're gonna have more grease zerks. You wanna make sure you get the ones that are on that sway bar as well. Next, I'm gonna check my brake pads and you can just look through your wheel spoke and see how much pad life is left. But since it's kind of hard to see, I'm gonna remove the wheel so you guys can actually see what's going on. With the wheel removed, we can see the brake pad material against the disc. We're looking pretty good. We have plenty of material. This is a new brake pad for comparison. And we're almost the same. Now the minimum spec is 0.5 millimeters, but without measuring it, if you're just looking at it, if you just see a sliver of pad left, you definitely wanna get in there and get these replaced because if you wear it down too far, the pad can wear into the disc and actually ruin it. One more check while I'm in here. You wanna look at the rotor. If there's tons of grooves or deep grooves in this, definitely get this and your pads replaced. Now we're gonna take a look at these tires. You wanna make sure the, the sidewalls, they're not cracked or damaged in any way. And when you're looking at the tread, you wanna make sure you have a minimum of three millimeters or if they look bald and in bad condition, just get them replaced, save yourself the hassle. But with that being said, when you're putting pressure in them, this machine calls for 14 PSI in the front and 23 PSI in the back. I know everybody likes to run their own pressures. Some people run the same pressure all the way around. So you're gonna have to make the call on that, but that's what the manufacturer calls for. So I'm gonna go ahead and check the pressures. To check the coolant, we're in the back of the machine in the cargo bed. We've got a little panel we need to remove. So this is our cooling reservoir. We got dust all over it. So I'm gonna wipe it off that way I can actually see what I'm doing. So with the cooling reservoir, you have a cold fill line a little bit lower. This is the max line. Your coolant might come up to that point when the engine is hot, but with the engine cool like ours, it should be right at the cold fill line. If yours is not, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you top it off and check the system for any leaks. Now our coolant is full and we are good to go, but if you had to add some, this cap just twists off you can add your coolant and then put the cap back on. When you put it on, just make sure you press down as you twist the cap on. And now we can put the cover back on. Now for the brake fluid, we're gonna remove the hood. This just pops up. There's a few tabs holding it down, so we're gonna work that off. So right here, we have our brake fluid reservoirs. You've got a minimum and maximum mark for the fluid on each of them. You wanna make sure you are in the usable range and that level usually corresponds to your brake pad life. As the pads wear, the fluid gets lower. So be aware of that, unless you have a leak or something like that, but your pedal is gonna feel bad if you do. So other than that, you wanna pay attention to the color of it. And if this stuff hasn't been flushed out within the last two years, you wanna go ahead and do that. So our brake fluid is looking good. We're gonna move on to the next check. Next, we're gonna change out our spark plugs. We're gonna start with the rear cylinder. So we're back by this passenger side rear wheel. There's a little plastic clip holding the spark plug wire. I'm gonna pop that out of the way and then remove the spark plug cap. Then using the 5 8 spark plug socket, I'm gonna remove the spark plug. Over time, this electrode will wear down and it will have a round corner when that happens. A new spark plug can help restore performance. Another thing to look at is if you see signs of oil on the plug, that can indicate a worn top end. And you can see this one isn't too worn down, but we're gonna show you how to do this anyway. Right here, we have our new spark plug and there's a little metal cap on top we need to remove. The other thing to know about NGK spark plugs, they come pre-gapped. So now we can reinstall this. I'm gonna start by threading it in by hand and then just snug it down. After that, install your spark plug cap then put your clip back in place. If that broke, make sure you use a zip tie. Now for the front cylinder, now I'm gonna remove the spark plug cap and use compressed air to blow around the spark plug to make sure we don't get any dirt in there. And then we'll remove it and install it the same way we did on the back. With that replaced, we'll reinstall the access panel and our seats. One of the last things that you wanna do is check your critical fasteners. So. At a minimum, you at least wanna make sure your lug nuts are tight, but it's not a bad idea to take a look at your suspension parts, make sure none of those bolts have came loose. Usually you can just do a visual inspection on some of that, 
but then I would definitely put a wrench to some of your roll cage fasteners and make sure they're all tight as well. Now, as you're going through the process, you're not necessarily trying to get a bolt even tighter or make it turn if it's already tight. But as you can see on our lug nuts, we did have a couple that were a little loose, so we got them snugged up. And as I'm going around making sure all the lug nuts are tight, in each area of the machine, I'm still taking a look around and making sure that there's no loose hardware. Next, we're gonna check our lights and make sure everything's working. So we'll start with the headlights, do the low beams and high beams, and then move to the tail lights, make sure the running lights and brake lights are coming on. If any are burned out, make sure you get them replaced. Now, if you have light bars, you can verify that those are working as well. Next, we wanna check a couple things up at the dash. So we wanna make sure the check engine light comes on for a couple seconds when we turn our key on and then turns off. If it stays on, you know you have an issue you need to take care of. So we'll start with that right there. Turned off, so we're good. Now, after it says sport mode, it says we need some maintenance. And since we just did all of that, we're gonna have to reset that. So to reset the maintenance required indicator, I'm using this bottom left button to toggle to settings. Then you wanna hold it down there. It's gonna give you the option to reset your maintenance. If it doesn't pop up right away, just hit the button through until it does. Then you're gonna hold the button on reset maintenance. After that, you're gonna click through to exit and then hold the button down on exit. Once you've done that, your maintenance required light should be reset. That's it for the basic maintenance on your Can-Am Maverick Trail or Can-Am Maverick Sport. If you have any questions, leave those down in the comments. And, you know, if you need any parts, oils, chemicals, things like that, click the link in the description below. We offer free shipping on orders over $75. So make sure to take advantage of that. And if you need more information, maybe you're doing more in-depth items or checks, you can always refer to your service manual. We also have a few how-to videos that are separate from this that give you a little more information on each item. So you can check those out and make sure you subscribe to our channel at the same time. I'm Charles with Rocky Mountain ATVMC. Thanks for watching.